Okay, here's our new Canon XA25 camcorders that we've got for shooting news here at the Edmonton Journal. I'm going to show you how we have it set up. So first on the outside, I'm going to show you how um, to turn it on. There is a camera, media and off switch. You flip it to camera to uh, turn it on or flip it to media to play back your videos. The only other switch you need to worry about at the beginning is here on the back side, on the other side, there is a auto or manual or cinema mode switch. Uh, only use auto if you are panicking and you can't figure out a setting. Just flip it into auto and everything will be set. But try to keep it in manual. Try to learn manual settings. It's easy to be in auto, but then when you're in difficult shooting situations, you're not able to take control. So that's why learn manual. It'll, it'll save you time in the end. Cinema mode lets you uh, turn on little features for changing the color and making things look all antique and whatnot. Um, just ignore that. Just keep it in manual. Uh, one last thing. If you notice that when you're in the menus, certain settings are missing, and you can't turn them on or off, it's probably because you're in auto mode. When you're in auto, it disables a lot of settings in the menu. So having it in manual gives you all the functions that the camera has. And finally, if I were you, I would take a piece of tape and I would just cover up that switch so that that auto button can't ever be flipped and we never have to worry about it again. It'll always be in manual mode. On the top of the grip handle, there is the audio control. On this particular camera, I have a Sennheiser wireless receiver and a Rode shotgun mic connected to the top. I have the shotgun mic going into input one, and I have the wireless Sennheiser going into input two. First and foremost to know is there's this switch here, on and off. If you have this set to off, basically this handle is turned off and it's only using the internal mics. So I have this set to on, and if I was you, I would take a piece of tape and cover this up, which I'm going to do right now. There's no reason to ever really have this turned off. Uh, if you have the handle on, then you have the shotgun and the Sennheiser on, so just leave it set to on all the time. If you remove the handle, it will default to the internal mic. The Rode shotgun mic needs 48 volts, so we have it set to 48 volt power. The Sennheiser just puts out a mic level input output, so we have to set the mic. Um, here we can change the microphones from auto levels, or if we want manual control. Example, say if you're doing an interview, a long interview with someone, you could set your Sennheiser wireless to be manual levels, and then use this to adjust the levels. 90% of the time, have it on auto, but uh, it's good to have it on manual when you're in control. It gives a much more pleasing audio uh, when you're in manual than if you're in audio, auto, because with auto, your levels are constantly spiking. Uh, the first word of every sentence that someone says is gonna be a little too loud because it's constantly spiking and trying to figure out what the levels should be. If you actually set them, your levels are gonna be a lot nicer and the audio will just sound more pleasing. But leave it on auto most of the time. Okay, here's how to use the menus. So it's all touch screen. Um, if you hit function, it brings up these kind of quick menus uh, for things like uh, changing your uh, program mode, white balance. So as an example here, if I go to hit this button record program, by default we have it in P mode, which is kind of like an auto exposure. If we want to take control of our exposure, we can go into TV or, or manual mode. Um, if we want to change our white balance, we hit function, white balance, uh, auto white balance. If I want to set my white balance, I just tap here, the custom button. Right now it's all blue from the last time I set it. If I hit set white balance, assuming I was, assuming I was uh, pointed at a, come on there, assuming I was pointed at a white object, it would take a white reading of that. And now that is set. So I go back and now that is set as preset one. Uh, and we can set two different presets. So that's handy if, example, you're, you're constantly moving from indoors to outdoors. Um, you could set a white balance for indoors and a white balance for outdoors and just quickly switch between the two. We'll hit function. Backlight compensation, always on. Backlight compensation is basically if you're in auto exposure, like P mode, and you're photographing a subject and they're a silhouette, 
and they're backlit, so therefore they're a silhouette. Um, by turning this on, it will compensate. It will basically brighten that person so they're not a silhouette anymore. Um, typically, you want this turned off, though, because it will tend to overexpose things you don't want exposed. So leave this off by default. If a person's in silhouette, you turn it on. I have also uh, set my custom bunk custom button number four to be my backlighting so that I can just quickly push it and it will just quickly turn the backlighting on or off. It's just a very handy feature. I control focus. If we go into function, focus. If we want manual focus, if we want manual focus, we can turn it on and then we basically tap on whatever we want to be in focus. Though you can really do this all the time if you want. Um, the advantage of do, leaving it in manual is that you're going to set it and it will stay there. If When you're in autofocus, if you tap on the screen, it will focus on that subject, but then it can easily drift out of focus uh, automatically. So this way you're going to set your manual focus and it's not going to change. That's good for an interview. If you're interviewing someone for an hour and you want to set the camera and you want to kind of make sure it's locked and it's not going to change, that's when you use manual focus. I'll turn that off. Peaking. I have peaking turned on uh, by default. Uh, we can turn it off by tapping this button here. If we go into menus, we can um, turn on, we can make our screen black and white. When you're black and white, it's easier to, to, to tell if things are in focus. And uh, we can also change our peaking color. So if you want to know what peaking is, I'll show you. I'll take this pen and throw it in front. There we go. Now there's kind of these red lines appearing on the pen. And the point of that is whatever is the area of highest contrast is the area that's in focus. And so it turns the area of highest contrast into red. Um, it makes it so that kind of what you see the screen kind of looks weird because things turn red. But it really, really helps for your focusing. It basically means you know if, if the person's face is red or if the object you're trying to film is red, you know that it's in focus. So whenever you're recording, we have it in P mode here and we have it on autofocus mode. Whenever you're recording, if you just tap the screen, you can tell it where you want it to focus on. But it can drift back out of focus after a while. But it's good to know if you hit cancel, it will cancel out of that. Uh, also, you can quickly change your focus by turning the dial here. That's a lot faster way to do it. Um, well, actually, no, it can be faster just to tap. You have the choice. Next, we're going to do exposure. So this is exposure compensation. I can tap on an area I want to focus on and or I can use this thing here to tell it to be, you know, two stops brighter or I could be, you know, three quarters of a stop under. So this is compensating the auto exposure. So this is kind of a quick way to make something a little brighter or a little darker. However, it's still automatically choosing the exposure overall. We also have zebras. By default, I have them turned on. You can turn them off by tapping this button. If we go into settings, here we can change our, our zebras if we want them at 70% or if we want them at 100%. I have them set to 100%. Uh, which basically means whatever in the scene is pure white is going to have these weird zebra patterns on them. So if I zoom over here, see this, this reflection in the window is here, this, well, it auto exposed there, but you see the parts there that are zebras? That means they're pure white or almost pure white, which uh, is probably going to look bad unless you want it to be pure white. This is kind of warning you that, hey, that's blown out. Usually the only things you want blown out are specular highlights, like reflections um, or light bulbs. You can also set that to be you can also set it to be 70%. So then whatever 70% um, of a 70% of the way to a highlight will be zebras. Um, and then you know you need to turn your exposure down. I'll leave it at 100. I, I typically in my cameras leave it at 70, but uh, 100 is a good way to start. If you think it looks ugly, I know when I first started using zebras, I thought they were quite annoying because you have all these zebra stripes all over your screen. Um, but my answer to that is that if you think it's annoying on your screen, believe me, it's even more annoying on your viewer's screen if, if all of your footage is overexposed. So the rule is if you see zebras, it's probably because your stuff is overexposed. 
when you have it so. So learn to love zebras. They really help you so you know if something's overexposed. You can always brighten an image, but once an image is blown out, pure white, you can't bring it back. Okay. Finally, I'm going to explain the um, auto gain control limit. By default, it's set to auto. That means it's going to automatically choose what gain is best. Gain is like your ISO on your, on your DSLR camera. So we're going to leave this to auto, and that means it's going to automatically choose what gain or ISO is needed to expose the scene. However, the downside of leaving it on auto is that if you're in a really dark scene, uh, it's going to try a really, really high um, gain, which is going to give you a very grainy image. If you want to control that, if you want to prevent it from going too bright and having too grainy, go into manual, and you can say that you don't want it to get ever be brighter than, you know, 12. Above 12, it's going to get quite grainy. So, or you can say, I don't want it to go above zero. If you're in manual mode, if you're in manual exposure mode, you don't have to worry about this, but that's your gain limit. So next I'm going to show you the uh, program modes here. Usually you can leave it on program and it will uh, just do auto exposure. However, there's a lot of times when it's good to go into manual mode. So if we tap manual here, now we can choose um, what aperture we want, the shutter speed we want, and the uh, gain, or which is like ISO speed that we want. Gain mode is really good to control manual exposure when you are, say, doing an interview and you know the light isn't going to change, or if you want, you want to have a consistent look, or say you're using two cameras and you want to match their exposure. Um, it's really important to have the same exposure for both cameras. If they're both set to auto, and then when you're editing, you're switching back and forth between cameras, it can be quite annoying for the viewer if the exposures are one's bright and one's dark, one's bright and one's dark. So this is good, and it's constantly changing. So it's good to have manual control of that. Leave it in P mode most of the time, and I'm going to show you in a bit how we can quickly switch to manual mode. Now you can change your stuff within the menu here. But also, if you're in manual exposure mode, I have set this little custom button here at the bottom to let you quickly switch between your manual settings. So here, if I push the manual button here at the bottom, you can see it uh, kind of lets me choose. Doo -doo -doo. See here now it says F1.8, and if I turn the dial, I can change that. If I hit the button again, I can change my shutter speed. If I change it again, I can change my um, gain. So that's kind of a quick way with a manual button to be able to change between your things. So I want to turn my gain down or I want to change my gain up. There I can just rotate through that way so it's handy to assign that and I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. Okay, let's go function. So also here in uh, recording programs, by default you're always at P mode. Now if you go into TV mode, this lets you control your shutter speed. Now by default as a general rule, your shutter speed should always be double your frame rate. So we're recording at 24 frames a second. So by default, you know, typically you want your shutter speed to be 1 over 48. Now if you're recording slow motion, like say you're recording 60 frames a second and you want to do slow motion, then you actually want your frame rate to be about 1 100th, which is close enough to double your frame rate. 60 frames a second times 2 would be 1 over 120. Um, but, uh, if you want a little crisper actually for slow motion, you can also try 1 2 50th. Um, also was going to look good. Uh, if you have a lot of light and sunlight, do 1 2 50th. Uh, that's when you're doing slow motion. Also, if you are doing, uh, say it's really dark, so you're in a really dark room or something, feel free to turn your shutter speed down to 1 over one, 1 over 24th. Now, this is the lowest you can go without your footage looking too blurry. So if you're really dark and you need that extra stop of light, you can turn it down to 1 24th, uh, and it will, uh, it'll work. Motion blurs can be extreme, but whatever. Also, if you are, say, doing a time lapse, you, it, somewhere in your settings here, you can also tell it to do um, high-speed video. Um, if that's the case, you're doing high-speed video, Feel free to drop your shutter down even more, 1 1 6th. It actually gives a much ple more pleasing look in, uh, when you're speeding up your video if you're dragging the shutter a little bit more. So anyways, default we should always have it at 1 48th for normal video, so we'll just leave it there. Um, and, but I'm just going to switch back into P mode. So if we go to menu, here's kind of the default settings that I've chosen for all the cameras. Um, 
zoom speed level I have turned up to fast um, just so you can zoom really quickly. Um, typically you're not, typically you don't want to be zooming while you're recording unless it's for an effect. Um, so you usually want to, you know, record wide, then quickly zoom in, record medium, then quickly zoom in, record tight. I have my zoom rocker speed set to variable. Uh, that basically means so that if I, uh, here on the rocker, if I'm pushing it just a little bit, it's going to zoom slow. If I push it in all the way, it's going to zoom fast. So um, handle rocker speed, I have this turned up all the way. I find the default up at the top, um, the, the top zoom in and zoom out button is way too slow. And I have that set to constant. Okay, let's go through the list here. Um, face detection's on by default. Neutral density filter, leave that on auto. Um, what, a neutral what the neutral density filter is, is basically sunglasses for your lens. When you're outside and it's way too bright and bright sunlight, it will pop little sunglasses in front of your lens. That makes it so that when you're outdoors, the lens doesn't have to be all the way at like f22. Uh, it's because uh, when, when your lens is at f22, the image can get quite soft and still be overexposed. So uh, just leave this on auto. Um, down here we can choose, down here we can choose uh, some audio control. We can set trimming, which means we can make, you know, input one a little bit, here's input two as an example. We can make it 6 dB or 12 dB uh, louder or quieter. That's good if you're trying to match two microphones together. Uh, also, there's a mic attenuator. An attenuator basically turns down your mic a whole bunch. These settings are good if, say, you're at a press conference and the uh, there's you know you can plug your camera into a soundboard, but the audio coming from the soundboard is way way too loud. You can you turn on the attenuator uh, as a way to basically turn down your um, sensitivity a whole lot. The other time this comes in handy is say you're at a uh, cheerleading competition and there's like a thousand screaming girls and it's way, way, way too loud. That's where the attenuator can also come in handy. But remember to turn it off after because it is making all of your audio way too quiet. And if you don't turn it off, the next time you go to record something, your audio is going to be too quiet. So um, I'm not going to get into Wi-Fi. So that's it for your shooting controls here. If we tap on this one here, I have it set to MP4. You can choose ABC HD or MP4. Um, they're both going to be the same quality, but uh, the advantage of recording to MP4 is that you're saving, you know, .mp4 files on the SD card, which you can just quickly grab off of the card, dra drop into a program, and, and, and edit it right away, or you could just send the file as it is to someone. Um, when you're in AVC HD mode, it's kind of recording into a, a folder of files that are kind of proprietary. You can't just instantly start playing them. You need a program that can play AVC HD um, or you convert it first. So for convenience sake, we're just going to leave it in MP4. Recording mode. I have it set to 24 megabit. That's the, high, the second highest quality. You can go into 35 megabit mode but then you're forced to be at 60 frames a second. Um, so, which, so for simplicity we're gonna, and a little bit better quality overall, we're gonna stay at 24 megabits. And this gives you some more functionality. When you're in 35 megabit mode, it kind of disables some of the features like slow motion. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna go to recording media. This is where you can choose which memory card to record to. Um, Relay mode, you can set this so that, uh, as an example, if you go to re relay recording, we'll make it so that it's going to, if card one gets full, it will default and start recording to card two. Dual recording allows it so that you could record, say, 24 megabits to card one. And then for card two, we could set it to be recording a lower quality, more compressed version. So that's really neat if, say, you're recording a press conference, you're recording the high quality version for editing on card one, 
card two is like a really low quality and that's for clip. So say you want to shoot a press conference and you just want to get a clip up on the website really, really fast, you can just grab card two and uh, make that lower quality if you want. I don't want relay recording right now, so I'm going to go back to standard recording. So frame rate I have set to 20, basically 24 frames per second. I've just always shot 24 frames a second. People say it looks more filmic or whatever. Um, I just like the, I just like the look of it. Um, you can shoot at 29.97 if you want. Um, People say this can have a little less motion blur, perhaps. Um, I just always do in 24 frames a second, and it makes for better slow motion. If we go here to slow and fast motion, hit on, I can tell the camera to shoot at either 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second, but then it's going to save. So say I turn this on here. Now it's going to be shooting 60 frames a second, but saving them at 24 frames a second. What that means is that you're going to get this video that's two and a half times slower. So uh, that's really cool. Now the down, one downside is that when you're recording in slow motion, you, you it's not going to record audio. So um, remember to turn it off after. But uh, recording in slow motion is really cool. Uh, also doing it this way is going to be higher quality video than if you shot at 60 frames a second and slowed it down afterwards. Uh, I, won't, I won't go into all the details of why, but basically this is going to this is going to retain the 24 megabit. If you are recording, um, if your recording mode is set to 35 megabit, then you're already recording 60 frames a second, which in Final Cut Pro, after the fact, you could slow that down to 24 frames a second, but it's going to have a lower quality than if you were shooting uh, than if you're shooting at 24 megabit and uh, doing the slow motion mode in camera. So we so I have this turned on. This gives that neat slow motion mode. I'm just going to turn it off for now, though. There we go. Um, don't worry about time code. I won't go into that. Um, all of this you can ignore, except for here. This is a really important thing to know. Initialize SD card. This is how you format. I don't know why. Every other camera in the world calls it formatting. Um, all of Canon's still cameras call it formatting, but for some reason, their video cameras, they call it initialize. So here I can hit memory card A and hit initialize. Um, and if I turn on complete initialization, it will take a little longer, but it will completely wipe the card. If you just want to do a quick format, turn that off and hit yes. And that's how you format your cards. Okay, so that was it for this, this uh, middle menu here. Next, we're going to go to the little gear here. This is your, uh, where you can set your clock. You would have set your clock the first time you turned on your camera, uh, but I don't think it lets you choose your time zone the first time you turn it on. So we're gonna go here to time zone. Uh, I'm in the you know Denver area. Well, I'm in Edmonton, Alberta, but Denver's my time zone. And you turn this button on to turn on daylight savings. It also has a nice feature here where you can switch it. Say you're traveling. Say you travel to New York. You could, just while you're in New York, you just tap this button and now it switches your time over to that, and then when you get home, it's kind of just like a one-button way to switch your switch your clock. Most people don't even remember to do it, anyways. Um, but you know, be sure to always have your clock set, um, especially for news. It's important that you know our timestamps are correct. We want to know when things happened exactly, and also it sucks if you have multiple cameras and one of them is off. It sucks having to figure out the math after the fact. It's good just to have your time set correctly. Um, that's how you do that. OLED brightness, uh, by default it's set to normal. I like having it a bit brighter um, myself. Uh, just you know, notice that if, if your screen is really, really bright, you might think your footage is a lot brighter than it really is. Um, but when you're out in sunlight, it's good to have this turned up. Um, what else we know? Headphone volume, that's where you can change that. And um, custom buttons here. So I have the dial, that's this little dial right up here. I have that set to manual 
control. So when I'm in manual mode, I can, um, you know, with one dial, I can change my shutter speed, aperture, and gain. That's quite handy to have, uh, so you're not having to use menus. Um, but you can change that to anything else you want. Um, for button one, we have set to uh, autofocus or manual focus quickly. Button two, by default, that is the three second pre record feature. Um, I've changed that to um, button, I've changed button two to powered IS mode, and I put a little sticker here to remind me. Powered IS mode is crazy. If you have, by default, it's turned off, it's kind of like an extra super duper image stabilization. If you are, say, hand holding your camera and you're zoomed in 20 times, turn this on and it, it's like you're holding it on a tripod. It's crazy. However, because the image stabilization is so strong, if you are moving the camera, if you're panning and, and tilting, um, it's going to look bad because it's trying, constantly trying to stabilize it. So um, the, pre, the three second pre-record function, I moved to button three and I put a little tiny sticker here to remind me that that's the three second mode. What three second mode does, I'll show you really quick. It makes it so that if we have it turned on, hit, I'll push the button here, turn it on. Now we see our time code is, is counting up constantly, but it's still paused. What this means is that if I hit the record button, it will actually start recording from an hour ago. So it's basically always recording, sorry, sorry, start recording from three seconds ago. So it's always recording. When I hit the record button, it's actually recording from three seconds ago. That's kind of cool if you're at an event and you're waiting for, for some spectacle to happen or something. Rather than leaving the camera constantly recording, you can just have this mode turned on. It's kind of neat. Um, we'll hit this thing to turn it off. Um, it's also handy, yeah, say you're recording someone and you don't want the camera on all the time and then you hear a great quote, you just hit the button and hopefully you caught it. It's kind of neat. So we're gonna go back into menu, back over here and um, custom buttons. You can change the custom buttons to whatever else you want it to be. Button number four, I have this set to, I have this set to backlight compensation always on, number four. That way, when you push number button number four here, the, uh, the, see, it turns on, off, on, off, on, off. So that's a great feature, just to quickly, if, if you're in P mode and you quickly just, someone's a silhouette and you just want, don't want them to be a silhouette anymore, you just hit that button and it will quickly change it. Uh, powered IS button here, um, that's, remember, we've, we've changed that to here. Uh, if we tap this, you can change it so that it's press and hold. Press and hold, it means that only when you're holding down the button does powered IS kick in. Um, or have it toggle on or off. I have it set to toggle on or off. Um, focus zoom ring direction. Um, this is good, say you shoot Nikon. Nikon lenses, um, their focus and their zoom is the opposite of Canon, so this is how you could switch it. I, I'm used to Canon, so I have it on normal. Focus ring response. I have that set to fast, that just means it quickly focuses. Focus preset speed, I have that set to fast as well. Um, we can ignore all of this starting off, and there we go. So that is the basic setup of um, the XA25. Um, just explaining some of the settings, the default settings that I use. Um, it is a great camera, and uh, you know, read the manual despite everything I say. Um, but, it, you know, it has some great control and great features and the customization. It's a great camera for shooting news and, uh, and you know, leaps and bounds above other cameras in terms of manual control and functions and stuff. And for the price, it's great. So, anyways, enjoy the camera.